Hi everyone and welcome to another recipe video. This week I'm doing the most requested thing in my channel, a mousse cake. How to build this beautiful frozen dessert that would be perfect for the summer actually. So I thought I'd put together a very simple version of this. Starting with a brownie layer which I've got here and this is from one of the brownie recipes already in my channel. And the reason I love this for this dessert in particular is because it gives me a very thin, dense layer, so full of chocolate flavor. I'm using half the amount of the ingredients in the recipe so that I get an even thinner layer. So be sure that when you make this, you spread it out as thinly as possible in your baking tray. And this only takes about 12 minutes in the oven, which gives us some time to work on the other components. So I'm gonna put this in the oven and start working on my milk chocolate mousse. And this is literally three ingredients. Some milk chocolate, which I've got here, whipping cream and some gelatin. And I'm gonna start by activating the gelatin and we call this blooming. So this just means adding gelatin to water and letting it sit for about 10 minutes until it's nice and hydrated. When it comes to using gelatin powder, make sure to stir the mixture so that there are no granules just sitting aside. So this is ready and I'm just gonna put it aside while I work on my whipping cream. And I'm just gonna dump my whipping cream. This is roughly 32%. And I'm gonna bring this to a gentle simmer. I want it to be hot so that I can add this to my chocolate and have the heat of the cream melt the chocolate for me. So literally, once your cream reaches the simmer stage, you can dump this all at once over the chocolate and just let it sit for a couple of minutes. Give it a stir after like the second minute, just to make sure that all the chocolate is immersed in the cream. Now my gelatin is ready and I want to add this to the chocolate mixture, but this might be a bit problematic to incorporate. So what I do is just put this in the microwave for about five seconds so that it's in liquid form and it's so much easier to incorporate. So I'm gonna dump this in the chocolate mixture and I'm gonna take my spatula and stir this very gently until it all comes together. You should have a very smooth mixture without any lumps. When you're done with that, you can just put it aside and let it come to room temperature at the very least. And while that's happening, I'm gonna work on the last component for this mousse. And that is the other part of my whipping cream. And this has been in my fridge because I want it nice and cold so that it whips up faster. And you just wanna whip this until you reach soft peaks. And at that point, you are done. If your chocolate mixture has come to room temperature, then you can directly add that onto the cream that you've just whipped and fold it all together. I start with just a little bit of the chocolate amount and fold it in. The resulting texture is quite liquid, but it freezes beautifully. Now you can go ahead and pour this directly onto your final molds or do as I will and put this all in a piping bag for easier handling. If you dump this in a piping bag, then you have a lot more flexibility when it comes to the choices that you make for the final molds. Um, I'm gonna show you the ones I'll be using for this video so that you understand why I went for a piping bag. So I have here a silicon mold that is sort of an eclair shape and I quite liked it. Um, so that's what I'll be using. It comes with this cutter um, it has this outer shape and inner shape that fits perfectly inside the mold. 
so this is quite handy to have and I'll be using that as a cutter for my brownie. So let's start building these things. I have my brownie. It has cooled for a bit, so it's nice and easy to just handle, cut and everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that cutter and start getting the right shape for my silicone molds. So I'm gonna use the inner part and just basically do cutouts of this brownie layer. You can see that it's nice and flat and it doesn't pull apart too much. There are no crumbs flying all over the place. I love this brownie recipe. You can see how rich it is, how dense, and you get that crackle anyway at the top, which is not super important for this recipe, but it's always very nice to have. So go ahead and do as many cutouts as you need for your individual needs. And once you're done, you can start building the mousse cake. And I'm starting with a thin layer of mousse that is gonna go directly into the mold. And you can see why the piping bag is so useful for this. Then comes the brownie and I gently press it into the mousse. Try to make it as level as possible. It's not absolutely necessary, it just looks better when you cut into it. Once you're done, you can cover the rest of the volume with more mousse and just get rid of the excess with a nice off-level spatula. So in principle, you can add as many layers as you like, as long as your mold is big enough to fit them. The main thing is, if you are going to use one of those silicon molds, is that you need to freeze it for a long time, at least four hours, okay? But that's not so bad because it gives you time to think about and make any decorative parts for your petit gâteau or mousse cake. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm making a rocher glaze, which I'm going to use to dip my petit gâteaus into. And this is one of my most popular recipes and with good reason, it's really delicious. And it just takes your cakes to another level. So the recipe is in the description box. I'm gonna link to that. Uh, make sure to check that out for all the details in how to make this. Now, the important thing when you're making a frozen cake like this, is to have the right containers if you're going to dip it into something. So you want to have a container that can fit the cake and that is tall enough to cover the whole cake with glaze in this case. So I picked that and I wanted to talk to you about some other tools that I find useful. I have silicon mat and toothpicks and this is going to be super useful to help me dip and take out my petit gâteau from the glaze. So here they are, they should be rock solid, okay? And they come out and they look fabulous and they should be very easy to work with as long as they still really nice and cold. So I'm just sticking my toothpicks a little bit onto them. I use one on either side and just dip them. I'm not going all the way I'm just dipping the sides. Make sure every side is covered. Lift with the toothpick, it's mm. super useful. And then just try to get rid of the excess from the bottom. And that's where the silicon mat is really useful. You can use parchment, of course. You can directly place this on a serving plate and just twist the toothpick to release. And that's the glaze. It looks very elegant to not cover it completely because you can see the difference in colors. You can see what the mousse flavor will be. I like to go ahead and decorate with some whipped cream. I wanted some whipped cream and praline with mine because I thought they would go very well together. And you can use anything you like at all. This part is completely up to you. But now you have the basics to create your own petit gâteau 
and present it like a pro. I hope this clears up a lot of questions. I hope you enjoy the recipe. This is such a delicious dessert and because it's frozen, it makes for a great summer dessert that is a showstopper in any occasion. So I hope you like it. I hope you can share it, try it and don't forget to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content like this and let me know also what you would like to see in the future. Thanks for watching, enjoy your petit gâteaux and I'll see you next time with more recipes.